Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany and Social Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Tuesday morning devotional time. And today, as we continue to read through the morning sections of Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening, today we come to his comments on Song of Solomon 5.8. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we awaken this morning, as we shake off the cobwebs and as we prepare for another day in your kingdom, we ask your God that you in every way might remind us of your providential blessing, that you might in your grace gather our hearts once more unto yours, that we might find our strength, our purpose, our calling, and our identity in you as our God. And most of all, that we might find rest in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will remind us that if our faith is in you, that if our hope is in the cross and the empty tomb, we have no reason to fear this present evil world, for we have more than we need in the Lord Jesus. And in these things we pray this day. Amen. Well, this morning we turn uh, to Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 8. I implore you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am sick with love. Such is the language of the believer, at least it should be. When we describe our desire to have fellowship with Jesus, Solomon writes that he is sick for his Lord. Gracious souls are never perfectly at ease, except when they are in close communion with Christ. For when they are far away from him, they lose their peace. The nearer to him, the nearer to the perfect calm of heaven. The nearer to him, the fuller the heart is, not only of peace, but of life and vigor and joy. For these all depend on constant fellowship with Jesus. What the sun is to the day, what the moon is to the night, what the dew is to the flower, such is Jesus Christ to us. What bread is to the hungry, clothing to the naked, the shadow of a great rock to the traveler in a sun-scorched land, such is Jesus Christ to us. And therefore, if we are not consciously one with him, we should not be surprised then if our spirit cries in the words of the song, I implore you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am sick with love. This earnest longing after Jesus has a blessing attending it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the beatitude in Matthew 5, 6 tells us. And therefore, supremely blessed are those who thirst for the righteous one. Blessed is that hunger, since it comes from our relationship with God. If I do not experience the blessedness of being filled, I will come again in my emptiness and eagerness until I am filled with Christ. If I do not yet feed on Jesus, I will continually continue to hunger and thirst after him. There is a hallowedness about that hunger, since it sparkles among the beatitudes of our Lord, as we said. But this blessing as all the blessings of God do, involves a promise. 
These hungry ones, we are told in that passage, shall be satisfied with what they desire. If in this way Christ causes us to long after him, he will certainly satisfy those longings. And when he does come to us, as come he will, how sweet it will be. You know, it's fitting, of course, in God's providence that we come to this reading as, of course, those of you at Bethany know, we have been spending much time in the Beatitudes over the last couple of months. And one of the assurances that we have seen in each of these Beatitudes is the way in which everything that we have is from Christ. This past Lord's Day, we spoke of the pure in heart. And where does that purity come from but the very finished work of our Savior? His righteousness imputed to us by faith. We think again of this hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Well, how do we know that we need that righteousness? How do we know that we should desire it? You know, often when you're raising children, you have to help them to see why the important things, why the good things are be sought after? Why hard work is necessary for a happy life? And our Heavenly Father knows our weakness. He knows our struggles. He knows that we're sinners. And so what does he do to encourage us to, to cry out after our beloved as Solomon does in the passage that we read? He does so by renewing within our hearts through the means of his grace, through the reading of scripture, through the fellowship of the saints, through the preaching of the word, through the worship of his people on the Lord's day. That's why it's so dangerous for us to neglect these things. For a heart which wanders is a heart that forgets what it has. So let us be watchful of these things. Let us be careful. Never to allow the idols of this life, of this age, of this day, to spoil for us the beauty of Jesus Christ. May our eyes be focused upon him. May we rest in his glory and his grace. Take care and God bless.